Hey there, and welcome to Feeding Chris. Happy Sunday. I kind of forgot what day it was, but it doesn't work because we always do the same thing on Sundays, which is cook for the week. So we're getting ready to uh, meal prep for our week. We're gonna make some uh, turkey marinara and lentil pasta, which we're unfreezing the marinara. I batch cooked it, I think about a month ago now. Um, we're gonna make our normal OG breakfast, my yogurt and fruit, um, and then Chris's eggs and stuff. And then we're gonna try a new recipe, which is chicken enchilada soup. I really like chicken enchiladas. I really hate the amount of work that I have to put in to actually get chicken enchiladas. We don't need a whole lot of tortillas outside of breakfast here. So I think the soup should be nice and we will get after it. Okay, so we got some of our ingredients out. Chris is nice enough to touch the raw chicken. Uh, most of the time I don't touch any of the chicken anymore. I've uh, gone up in management, so he does it now. And we're gonna stick all of those guys in the Instant Pot and we'll use those for Chris's second lunch, which I guess for most people would be dinner, but we eat it at three o'clock in the afternoon um, because we go to bed early. And so we'll cook that and then we'll also cook the chicken for the chicken enchilada soup in the Instant Pot. We just throw them all in there with a little bit of water, a little bit of stock and cook them for about 12 to 13 minutes on high pressure and they come out really great. They're nice and moist. Let's see here. So then here's the turkey marinara that I cooked about a month ago back. I made four of these. At the time there was a seal on turkey, I think. And so we grabbed some organic turkey. There's um, yellow squash, zucchini squash, onions, and um, mushrooms added to regular organic pasta sauce that we usually get from Aldi. I think we might've got that one from Costco. And then we pre-pack the vegetables for Chris's breakfast. So in here we've got jalapenos, onions, uh, red bell peppers, and then cremini mushrooms. This is what we'll saute to go in his breakfast. And then this stuff back here will go in the soup. So we've got three different things of organic cheese, half and half because I couldn't find it organic. We got these really cool little diced green chilies. Some Rotel, the recipe didn't call for Rotel, but I'm gonna use it anyways because I like it. Um, this is Renfro's and then the broth. This is the broth that agitated me. It was like a dollar more. I'm upset about it. This is the one that we normally get. I guess it's like the store brand or something that's cheaper. It, it's all broth, it tastes the same to me. But, so that's kind of what we're working with for the start of all of this. So this is Chris. Hi, Chris. Chris makes the meat. He seasons it however he wants to and I eat it. He doesn't usually put anything like super weird on it, so we're normally okay. I haven't had anything that was too questionable yet. So into the Instant Pot and he'll put some water in there. Interesting thing about Chris, uh, I think a lot of folks have their husbands in the kitchen cooking with them lately, but um, it's actually part of the way that I got him in a way. So when we were friends, we used to both still cook like this. We would get our groceries on the weekend and then we would cook the whole, for the whole week. And then we would send each other pictures of our fridges after everything had been pre-packed and ready to go. Um, I think I still have a few of those pictures. Maybe I can find some of them. We'll reminisce together. Um, so it worked out really well because you know it's an easy lifestyle thing. The only thing that we had to overcome was he used to go get his groceries when the store opened on a Sunday and then he would cook right after and I, get my groceries on Saturday, a little, probably about like nine o'clock in the morning. And then I cook on Sunday because I am not as ripped and muscly as he is. And I kind of get tired all day. Like if I do it all day long, it's just too much. So we were a house divided on that. Fortunately, he's a kind and benevolent husband. <laughs> and uh, he's come away, come around to my side of the thinking on this. So we now cook on Sunday, get our groceries on Saturday. He's gonna poke it. Beware, beware of the pressure cooker. <laughs> it scares me every time. I've heard of people having um, paint chipping off of their cabinets because they put it on their countertop. So we put it over here. I still think it might be right up on the ceiling. This thing is like intense. I don't know if you can even hear me over that. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm 
a little scared of this. It's never gone that much. And there's some like little white stuff on here. I think we might have put too much chicken in this. Um, Chris eats a lot of chicken. So we try and make it easier. And we're trying actually to use less electricity by putting it in here rather than putting it in the oven and freeing up the oven to make roasted vegetables, which we make pretty frequently. This may be on my last video. Let's see. I'm a little scared of it. <laughs> It hasn't blown my arm off yet or anything like that. Oh, thank God, it's chicken. I'm not just saying that for you guys. Like I was momentarily concerned for my personal safety. We got some chicken. It appears to be chicken. It looks like chicken. Um, so Chris will use this chicken for his second lunch or dinner. And I will use it for the chicken chata soup that we're gonna make in just a minute. It's 10 pounds of chicken. 10 pounds of chicken. Chicken. And, and I think this is important. So Chris does this great thing. I'm gonna trade him for the phone. Okay, so it took us a second to get set up here, but Chris is actually... <laughs> in our attempt to make all this chicken, you see we're like below the line in there. I wonder if we were above the line when we started it. But now, and I don't know if you can see, but there's like a, oh, you can kind of see when I run my hand through it. There's like a chicken grease film all over my counter that now I'll have to clean up. And then you can really see it here. So note to self, maybe eat a little less chicken. Got the chicken brouhaha all cleaned up just in time for brunch. I don't know what you're thinking, people. This is not brunch, but today it is. It's usually breakfast. So he makes this for me every day. It's the sweetest thing. He cares about my health. Isn't that nice? Um, and it's just Organifi green. So it's like a bunch of green things that you need. Um, and he drinks this rather than take vitamins. And it actually tastes good. You know, a lot of those green smoothies that they'll charge you like $12 for or whatever. Um, they taste gross. Like I, I don't want to eat kale really, and I don't want to drink it for sure. Um, but this tastes, it kind of tastes like tea with a little bit of lime in it and like a green bit on the back end. So not too shabby. So I'm going to drink this because my husband made it for me and I think it's cute. <laughs> so this is what we do with our life around here, especially when the kids aren't home. We threaten each other with pinchers and charge around the house, you know, the things that adults do, right? <laughs> so he's wielding pinchers because I, I know my dishwasher's broke, so we're washing everything by hand. Please excuse. Clean, I promise. So we took the chicken out of the woo, pressure cooker and drained it. And so he's going to now take the chicken that he wants to put in his salad. And then I'm gonna use the rest of it. <laughs> I'm gonna use the rest of it um, for the soup. I would strongly suggest whenever you are meal prepping for the week that you don't make any more than one weird recipe or like one thing that you have to look at a phone for, that you have to steal your husband's phone so you can film with your phone and then you can see the recipe um, when everybody knows that I'm not really going to use the recipe much anyways. Um, it takes so much time to try and figure out how to make something new while you're also doing this. So if you're a person that likes to do a whole bunch of new food every week, you never want to eat the same thing, meal prepping might be a little more difficult for you. Um, so we try to do just one weird recipe and usually I pick it um, because I like more varied food than Chris does. So we're gonna make this sauce in here. I've got the recipe here and it's telling me to put the liquids into this pot. So that way, um, the cheese will melt into it. So we like um, put all the liquid in and then we'll all we'll bring it all up to temperature. And again, I'm kind of loosely following this recipe. So it actually calls for, let's see here, a 20 amp, 28 ounce can of green enchilada sauce. They didn't have green enchilada sauce. So I'm just gonna do green salsa. They said you could use that if you like it hot. So we do, so I'm gonna use that. And then it calls for 24 ounces of chicken broth. And these each are 
32, but I'm doubling this recipe. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it. It's probably fine. Um, Chris doesn't love soup, so if I screw it up, I'm the only one eating it. So. Well, I guess the kids, are, the kids are eating it too, but they don't know as much to complain about it. Okay, so this Miss Renfro plate people, I love these people. They're in Fort Worth and they make um, habanero and ghost pepper chili salsa. And um, I find them at Aldi, they're the cheapest there. Let's see if I can, I may have to, uh, I should have made you open the drawer first. Oh, how amazing, it just came right off. It didn't even make the popping sound. If you didn't tell me, they wouldn't know. Hey, I'm trying to be honest, right? That lack of interior monologue thing is good for us. Okay, so we threw that in there. Let's see. The next thing it wants us is, and we'll wash all these and do the recycling and we'll see down here. Uh, it wants the chicken broth. We put it in the slow cooker. Okay, so this guy is already on. I have it in slow cooker mode. I don't have a slow cooker anymore. My oldest, I went out of town, and he's 19, by the way. He's like a grown up person. So don't think he's like a little baby and I'm leaving here at home. Sometimes I kind of feel like he's still a little baby, but he's a grown up, I promise. Um, so I left him here at home and I cooked him a really nice organic whole chicken and vegetables. And he went to eat it and he was moving the slow cooker that I had it in, which was a very nice one. And he accidentally dropped the whole thing. We have pictures of that too, I don't know. but. So I don't have one. So when we bought this one, Chris bought this one for me for Christmas. I kind of think it's a little self-serving because he gets all the chicken out of it. Um, anyways, um, this one, we made sure to get one that had a slow cooker button on it. So that's what we're doing with this. of my like countryness, you know, like that one lady with her butter problem. She's also got a racism problem too though, so at least, you know, we're not that southern. Um, but yeah, so this called for four ounces for each one. I'm doubling it, but I think I'm gonna put like 16 ounces in it because we're extra like that. I like cream cheese. I'm pretty sure it's good for you. I really think it's good for you, but The keto people would tell me that it's good for me, I think. Ugh, it, it's kind of gross though. It gets like all up on the digits. I don't love that. For breakfast, I have 22 eggs. I put in this turmeric powder, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. It's all this weird stuff on top. And that makes it so my eggs are cancer fighting in my body. Since we used Canadian bacon for the breakfast burritos in the breakfast bonanza video, Chris gets some extra bacon for his breakfast. He used to use bacon in his breakfast pretty frequently, but the organic bacon's like $8 a thing, right? It's like all of the money. And then Natural Grocer is the place that we normally buy it from. 
um, stopped selling it and so they stopped putting it on sale, which means we stopped buying it. So this one's not an organic one, but it had very, very few ingredients in it and it didn't have any nitrates or anything like that. So I picked up a couple packages to make breakfast burritos out of, but now it has been paid forward, <laughs> paid forward, confiscated, I guess, depends on if you're going for negative, positive, for Chris's breakfast bowls. He uses the bacon in his breakfast bowls, but he also will use the grease to fry his spinach in later. How do you feel about crispy or soft bacon? I'm a crispy bacon, I think. Crispy or soft? Soft? No. Maybe I like something, <laughs> maybe I like something in the middle. Eh, we're cooking together, we're learning things. He's gonna put this whole thing of spinach in there. I don't know if you can see how big that thing is, but it's like massive. 16 ounces. It amazes me how fast spinach cooks down. Woo! That got a little excited. Oh, flying spinach! Mandy! Oh, it's getting me. Yeah, I bet it is. I lost one. Oh dear. All right then. Yeah, it's probably fine. That was some serious attack spinach. I think it must have been from the water in the spinach. I don't know. He doesn't normally do that. But then again, he's been using turkey bacon or not using much grease anymore or butter. So we may be out of bacon grease practice. Look how much it goes, like it just, it minimizes. It turns into like no spinach. That's how they get you. They're like, look at this big, beautiful box of spinach. And then you buy it and you put it in the pan and it turns into like nothing. All right, we've never seen spinach jump out of a pot before, but here it is in a more docile state. Oh, later. Yeah, right. That was exciting and then normal pretty quickly. So we put the vegetable mixture, uh, spinach, mushroom, onion, bell pepper, and jalapeno pepper mixture into the other half. needs like non-slippy feet. Yeah, it does. I don't know why it doesn't have non-slippy feet. Maybe I can make it like some little colander shoes. There's got to be a way to do that. I could put electrical tape around them, but then it'd be hard to wash. We'd have to like, yeah, I don't know. That might, might not be good. Cleanliness issues. I do it this way because my wife told me it's better. I did. Do you do it because I told you it's better or did you try it and realize that it's better and so now you just do it that way? Damn it! <laughs> I was looking for a win there. So he used to mix it all up together and I thought it looked like kind of squishy and smoshy like the eggs and everything. It looked like a scramble. Like you know how if you can't make an omelet, it looked like that. I can't make an omelet. I can though. That's why here I am. I'm here for you buddy. We, we, uh... I can make a fold over if you want. Well, I can do that too. Nothing else. Oh, any I think other, that counts. Any other omelet is too hard? That totally counts. Okay. Now? Now he licks it. The important part is the bacon. Mmm. I didn't eat all of his bacon. He's gonna try and tell you that I did, but I didn't. See, look, there's plenty right there. See it? I ate some of his bacon. There's a designated amount, but on each one. What if I gave you the bacon? You didn't know you were gonna get the bacon and then I like nicely shared bacon with you that we didn't that you didn't know that we had. I didn't know we had. That you didn't know that you could use for this. Huh? 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 Mm -hmm. well, again, if you weren't trying to get some kind of thing out of it, I <laughs> that the extra could have been yours. <gasps> Are you saying that my bad attitude made it less likely for me to get bacon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably true.
the one cucumber. We have leftover radishes from last week, so I'm gonna put those on top. We have all of these for like 60 cents or something, that's crazy. Because they're not organic. Sometimes the organic stuff is cheaper than the regular stuff, the conventional stuff. But every once in a while we find something that it's like highway robbery, what they're charging us organic prices for. And apparently radishes. radishes. <laughs> Who knew? Did a lot of people even eat radishes? I don't know. I don't know. But he cut them and as you can see, his fingers are intact. That would not be the case if I cut them. Ooh, we've almost got pasta sauce. It's like mostly unfrozen and then you have like a little iceberg there. It's a good thing there's no ships sailing in my marinara because if they were, it would be treacherous. So now you can kind of see the vegetables, the turkey that we've got in there. Um, try to like, especially for pasta sauce, put a lot of veggies in it because when you get it from the store, it's just tomatoes and a lot of times they put sugar in it. And you kind of have to watch it. It gets a little, I don't know, pasta sauce is one of those things like you think it's healthy, but sometimes it gets a little weird. And then here is the pasta that's gonna go in with my little turkey marinara bricks. <laughs> um, by the way, all the meat in that is cooked. Like we cooked that a few months, or I think last month, um, before we put it in the freezer. So all that's done. So I, at least I don't have to worry about that. So these guys are red lentil and quinoa. And they're a fusilli pasta. I keep saying penne because penne is what I like. I wish that that's what they were. They used to have a really good penne of these. I can't remember where I bought them, um, but these guys come from Kroger. They're their central truth. Simple Truth Organic version. I think they're under three bucks, um, but they really fill you up. They have a whole bunch of protein in them. I was kind of surprised. Um, and Chris doesn't eat any kind of beans. So I was really surprised that he liked these. They kind of taste like lentils to me, but don't tell him because um, he might decide that he doesn't like them anymore. But this has like revolutionized my pasta making life. So we got our noodles into the pot. Here they are, boiling away. I put kosher salt in them. We normally put uh, Himalayan salt on like the food that we're gonna eat, not the food that we cook with. Um, I'm not sure what salt you're supposed to use to salt pasta water, but I was told that if you don't salt your pasta water, that you're a monster. Um, so we don't, we salt these and we don't drain them. When, or we drain them, but we don't rinse them when they're done so they can like hold on to the sauce. And then I put a lid on this other guy because my bricks of marinara were not thawing fast enough for me. I'm pretty impatient when it comes to, well, most things. <laughs> so I'm hoping that the lid will help get us along. So we'll finish up this. Here's the end product of the noodles. They go in super red looking and they come out looking pretty normal really. And they get a lot bigger. They really kind of fluff up. So I made two boxes. I'm told that that might be too much, but maybe we'll just be really hungry this week. Chris is always really hungry. So, I mean, it could work out, we'll see. The fun thing about these is, is I always put them in these little Tupperware thingies. They sell them around Christmas time and they're meant to give people gifts with, um, but they put them 90% off after Christmas and I buy them up and I use them for things that we're not going to put in the microwave. So we don't microwave any plastic, but for storing things that we're gonna make lunch out of, we use these a lot. And I think they were probably, uh, I think they were like 90 cents around that, under a dollar for four of them. And they're pretty big. I mean, one holds a whole thing of pasta, like they're pretty good size. So we use those pretty frequently. What you doing? I'm going to eat this cheese. Why you eat cheese? Yeah, it's leftover from last week. Oh, I like I like leftovers. What kind of cheese is it? It's pepper jack. I'm about to show the It's pepper jack. It's pepper jack. I like pepper jack. That's nice. Uh, why you know? You're not gonna share with me? Yeah, me too. I also you, like pepper jack. You not share? Share, share spouse. Sharing spouse. Yeah, sharing spouse. Maybe I can make a pepper jack ball. I have unshredded. I bet you can make two pepper jack balls. I have unshredded this cheese. I bet, I bet you can make two. A perfectly spherical pepper jack ball. 
Oh, that's nice. Look at that. So what you're telling me is you're gonna make two pepper jack balls. I feel like the comments I want to make now are not YouTube appropriate. Yeah, probably not. He's funnier in person, honestly. But, but since you have more than one, does that mean that I get one? Obviously, I need two balls. Guess who got a cheese ball? It's me. He gave up. Now he's shredding more cheese. I think he likes me. Not only did he give me the cheese ball. Mm. Um, it was nicer before I bought, I bit it, honestly. Like he did a good job of rolling it. Like actually pretty spherical, but anyways. Um, but he's also shredding my cheese. So that's nice, which means I don't have to wash the thingy again, the chopper thingy. It's not awful to wash, but like if you already had the cheese thing out, it sucks to wash both of them. So nice husband, look at that. This is Chris's breakfast cheese. It fits into the container and it's very nice. So apparently, apparently that's why he does it. The way he does it is because he likes it to fit in this little specific container. It's like it's too sticky together when you use the thing and then it doesn't go onto the breakfast very well. I see. And now for the easiest thing that we do is my OG breakfast. So. The kids and I will eat this if we don't want to microwave something or especially if we're eating it at home, we're not going to take it anywhere. I used to take it with me to work and I made it where it wasn't all mixed up and then I would stir it once I got in the office and put it in the freezer. Um, but now that we're home all the time, I make it to where it's all together and we just take it with spoons out of a big bowl. So we put a whole thing of the yogurt in. This is the non-fat one. I kind of like taking yogurt out. It kind of goes like funk sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. So let's see if it will go funk today. Ha! So I just use the whole thing. And then usually Chris gets a spoon and eats the little leftover that's in there. Um, and then we put two cups each of these berries. I guess you could put whatever fruit in it you like but I like these ones. And honestly, I kind of forget to eat fruit sometimes. So this is a good way for us to get them. They're low glycemic fruits. Mm, diabetes runs like crazy heavy in my family. So my doctor was saying to me, hey, don't eat a whole lot of high glycemic ones. It's made me sad because I love pineapple. I love mangoes. Um, so I started incorporating these guys into my breakfast. And I actually really like them. I kind of got used to them. These cherries are awesome. Yeah, let's see if I can, they're frozen ones. So yeah, I get these at Costco. And so you kind of have to dig them out of there. Okay, so that is that. And then I throw like a half a cup of nuts in there. Whatever kind of nuts you have. These ones are cashews. I also don't normally buy cashews, but I looked for wal uh, wal bleh, walnuts. Can we say that? Walnuts at every store and nobody had them. So cashews it is. And then since this is Greek yogurt, I know some people are gonna be horrified, um, but I'm gonna put some raw unfiltered honey on it. I looked and looked to see if honey needs to be organic and it seems like it does not. Um, I guess it's kind of hard to make the bees organic, um, but it's too sour for me to eat it fully unsugared. Let's stick it in here. I'm telling you this thing is my friend. I don't know. I mean, I could just stir this by hand. I used to every day in small batches, but it's really thick. So it's kind of like nicer to do it like this. I make a thing that you can use to shield it to make sure nothing pops out, um, but I'm too cheap to buy it. So I just use my hands. I'm gonna make a little purple. This is a new paddle attachment, and I don't think it quite mixes it as much as my old one does. It did, but I used the old one so much that it literally fell apart. Okay, Good snacks. So now we have yogurt for the week, and we'll um, use that in between 
microwaving foods. And then I get to lick this, or somebody does. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's see, we're done with this guy, and whenever we get ready to put them in the microwave when we eat them for lunches, we will put cheese, some cilantro, and then I have some leftover uh, diced green onions in the fridge, so we'll put those on top and it'll look a little more appetizing. These are actually really good. So I think the next time I might put a little bit more chicken in them and make kind of like a chicken chili thing rather than a chicken soup. Um, Cause Chris will like that one better, but let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And the only reason that we only have 12 is because I only have 12 leftover containers. So some of these actually got a lot more than what I'll eat for lunch or what the kids will eat for lunch. So I'll probably put them back in and eat them the next day. Um, we got some tortillas and we got some salad. So we may have some kind of stuff like that on the side. So we're done with this. So today we made Chris's breakfast, the OG. Um, we made my breakfast, the kids' breakfast, the yogurt. We made, let's see what else, chicken for Chris's salad, all the salad fixings. Oh my God. So we have everything that we'll eat for the week and hopefully we enjoy it. And if we really do, then we'll make this again. The end. I forgot. We also made marinara. The end. Oh,